Well, here we are again. Thank the Lord. We're just excited to be with you, and we pray that as you continue to watch these discipleship empowerment tips, that you will continue to learn, just like I'm learning. There's so many things that you can learn from God's Word that's so exciting. And there is lots of these words that are just as we said before, and they're nuggets. Some of them have kind of a negative side to them, where God tries to turn them into a positive side for us. And tonight's kind of one of those things. I don't know if you've ever failed at anything, but I have over the years. I mean, probably got started off my first major failure, you could sort of say, was grade two when I failed grade two. Now, I haven't really determined how, who failed, whether the teachers failed or I failed, but most likely me. I was busy doing not schoolwork, but all kinds of other things. And of course, at the end of the year, my report card said to me that I had failed. And so I know a lot of us, when we think of this word failed, we could probably think of something that we've failed at, or at least failed at at the first start, and then after trying to work at it and worked at it, finally was successful. I know sometimes when it comes to cooking and other things, you can fail at the beginning to make something, but you keep working at it that eventually you become successful. But So today is... Our title of this message is that do we feel like we have failed somewhere along the line? Because I believe God wants to take our failures and turn them into our successes. If you look at the word failed itself, it means to be unsuccessful, not to succeed, to fall short of a goal or of a mark, not able to make the passing grade. That's what was, was me. Uh, to be disappointed over a result or an event that has taken place. A shortcoming. You know, failures seem to have been connected with some type of measuring stick. So the only way you can... Can you imagine if you never had any way of measuring anything, then you would never have been a failure. But because we use measuring sticks to measure things, we can then determine whether we have been successful or whether we have failed. And so we have all kinds of ways we measure things. But many things in life had some type of pass or fail component to it. No matter what it is, we're building a house or we're, we're cooking something, whatever it is, it seems like hidden within whatever we do has a pass or failure to it. And so today we're going to look at that word failure. Uh, it reminds me also, when you look at this definition, it's uh, the word failed. It means that you failed to hit the mark of some type of measurement. I found these pictures on the internet today. Uh, this one shows a man shooting an arrow, or actually many arrows, at a target. And, of course, not hitting the target at all. And so then what happens? You just keep trying and trying. But some people give up. Here's another guy. Well, he's shooting arrows too, but he's managed to hit the outside of the target at least a couple times, but all the other ones have failed. So, as I said earlier, often people feel like a failure in some form or another. You know, you may have feel like you're a failure as a mother or as a grandmother, or you might feel as you're a failure and, you know, you've let God down concerning certain things in the church or or a failure in the way you've communicated. I don't know. The enemy, the devil, he loves to always make us feel like we've failed at something. So that we will feel anxiety and stress over it. And not have the joy of the Lord in our lives. But have this overwhelming failure. And the devil likes to keep reminding of us of our failures. Can you say amen to that? I know many of you will know what I'm talking about. But God, He didn't create us to be failures. He did allow failures to happen in our life to make us stronger. And we're going to see those testimonies tonight. You know, when you look at the Joseph's life in Genesis chapter 24, verse 28, I can imagine at first he must have felt like a failure. He had this dream 
you know, that when he had on his coat of many colors and his brothers were going to bow down to him and everything. And it wasn't long that a few days later he found himself in a well. And a few hours after that, he found himself on his way to Egypt. And a few days after that, he found himself in a jail. And I'm thinking, he's probably thinking like, boy, my life is messed up. I have really blown it. I'm a failure. Well, as we know, with Joseph, God turned those failures into successes. It says in, in uh, Genesis forty-two twenty-eight. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? See, Joseph didn't tell his brothers. They had come, and then they had gone, and they come, and they gone. And, and now, you know, the, Joseph had set it up so that they could experience what it was like to be a failure. And in their, in their hearts, they were feeling like a failure. Oh, how are we going to go back and tell our dad? We told our dad we would do this. We would look after Benjamin. We would do all kinds of things. And now we've even failed at that. And not only have we failed, but now the money that we had given is now back in our sack. And now we're going to be in the, in the real troubles. And wow, what do we do? And so, but as you read the story of Joseph, he moves from going through failure after failure after failure. It seemed like no matter what he did, he became a failure. But it wasn't long after that, over the period of years, God raised him up to the second highest person in the country and gave him much success to the place that he could bring all his brothers and families to the land of Goshen and that God would use his success to be able to start a people group, to be involved in a people group who would eventually become the nation of Israel. So along the way, there was these failures. Then we have the Joshua where... where Again, I'm sure he's probably struggled sometimes with failure too. In Joshua, or in Deuteronomy first, we have Joshua being set aside now as the main leader. Moses is finishing up and now is going to turn it over to Joshua. And in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 it says, this is what is being said to him, Be strong and of good courage, do not fear, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God... He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor fail you. And I think that's something all of us need to be reminded of often, is that if we are walking in the Lord and according to His will, we can then have the precious promise that God will never leave us or fail us. But Joshua needed to hear that. And he needed to hear it because there was some dynamic things that he was going to have to face very shortly in the near future. And we see that as we go into Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. And again it is written. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And as I was with Moses I will be with you. I will not leave you nor fail you. But be strong and of good courage. For the people you will um, shall divide as an inheritance. The land which I swore to your fathers to give. Can you imagine Joshua's walking along? He's got probably about 2 million people following him. He's got a river in the front of him that he's got to cross. And he's got armies on the other side. And God is saying, you know, Joshua, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm with you. I'm not going to fail you. And he might feel like, wow, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do it? And the thing is that he, how, the way he's going to do it is to do it in the strength and the power of God and not in his strength and power. He'd seen the mighty hands of, of, of God as they left Egypt and through the 40 years and, and the wandering and that, but there's a difference being second in command to being first in command. And I knew he probably was feeling some fear, and God says to him, don't worry, Joshua, I'm going to make you strong and be courageous, for I'm going to be with you. I will not leave you or fail you. Isn't that beautiful? I believe when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, He makes that commitment to us too. That He's not going to let us down. Even though the worldly things may come upon us, even though there may be all kinds of stress and anxiety, God is there to walk with us 
so that we're not a failure, but that we can have success, not in the things that we do, but in what he does through us. Amen? And that's what's so exciting. Then we come along to again to David, but a little bit different this time. We're not going to go to the Psalms, but David is now talking to King Saul. And there's this big dude called Goliath over on the other side of the army. He is cursing God and he's doing everything. Saul is feeling like, what do we do? The army doesn't want to fight him. And there is this Goliath. And he's probably got four or five other brothers the same size as him. They've got a massive army over there. And they have felt that they have failed God. And David comes along. Remember, he's a shepherd boy. He comes along and he says, So David went to wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. And, and Saul sent him. Okay. We move down here to uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 32. That's what I wanted to read. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistines. So David, this young boy, is now saying to King Saul, Don't be, away. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart fail you. God is in this, and I believe he's going to give me success today. Just like he gave me success over the lion and over the bear, he's going to give me success over Goliath. You know, we got a lot of Goliaths in our lives. Some of you are facing huge Goliaths in your lives right now. You know, because of your businesses, because of your homes and everything else you're facing. You know, maybe sicknesses, maybe you've been laid off from work. These are big Goliaths. But... We need to trust David. Like David says, hey, you know what? I, My God has not failed me yet, and I'm trusting that he's going to continue to deliver me all the way through. And that's what we're believing too, that God is going to deliver us. Even when we go over to the area of, of Lamentations, Lamentations, again, was written by Jeremiah. And Jeremiah... I mean, he was a prophet, called of God a prophet, and everything he touched went wrong. They, they put him in a dry well. I mean, he prophesied and spoke out, and he gave the words of God, and they just got angrier and angrier at him. Can you imagine what the success rate he must have felt like? That the more he stood up for God, the greater it seemed like he failed. And sometimes we as preachers and that, we struggle with that sometimes too. You know, when we're facing things, we're thinking we're doing what God has called us to do. And it seems like we're going this way. And the church or whatever we're working with or the people, they're going that way. And the enemy wants to come along and make us feel like we're a failure. And he is so good at that. And Jeremiah is a prophet. He felt that. Just like... Joseph felt that. I'm sure Joshua felt that. I'm now, I know David, if you would go through the Psalms, he struggled with his identity. There was times he was on the cloud, on the mountaintops, praising God, and there was other times he was deep in the valleys. You know, Psalms are often like a, you know, they're, they're like a, a valley and a hilltop. One moment he's on the top, and the next moment he's down. And you know what? A lot of us are like that. One moment we're on the top, and the next moment we're on the down. Can you imagine Jesus himself? I mean, he just goes out and gets baptized. You know, the Father speaks to him and says, This is my beloved Son. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a dove. And moments later, he's driven out in the wilderness and tempted. But he did not fail in that temptation and trial. But with the temptation and trial, he met it with the Word of God with the scriptures, and the enemy was defeated. And I believe God makes it possible that if we link ourselves up to the Word of God, which we'll see in a moment, and link ourselves up to the power of the Holy Spirit, that together when we walk in the presence and the will of God, we will not be failures, but in God's eye, we will be a child of success for His glory. Because he wants to glorify himself in us. Don't keep putting yourself down. But realizing that God wants to lift you up. 
Yes, it may look at for a season, you're a failure. And I know what that's like. I have had so many times, you know, people can tell you I'm a pretty good person at having pity parties. I can sometimes have the best pity party. Are any of you like that where you can have a pity party? You know, when you get down on yourself and you get down on the things you're doing and you think that just that's not all coming together, but then God begins to speak into your heart and God's presence begins to come closer to you. He anoints you and you begin to realize, I don't need to stand there as a failure anymore. I can stand in front of my Goliaths like a king's kid. Amen? In Luke, Jesus teaches about this whole area also concerning failure. In Luke 12, 33, he says this verse, But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Then in verse 32, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Verse 33, Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourself money, uh, money bags which do not grow old. A treasure in heaven that does not fill where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. See, Jesus wanted to tell, hey, you know what the reason why we so often feel like a failure and feel like things are going up? Because we're investing too much in the things of this world when we need to be investing in the things in the kingdom of heaven and God's kingdom. And we need to be laying up treasures there because that's what we're going to be able to take with us. You know, so much of us have got so much stuff, and I've got stuff all over the place. Stuff, 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 stuff. You know, now my wife is generous and nice to me. She used to call it junk, but now she just calls it stuff. But a lot of us have that kind of stuff. And you know what? You can't take it anywhere with you. It's going to all get left behind. We should not try to accumulate things, but we should be able to accumulate things that God has given to us. That as we trust in Him, we are putting up treasures in heaven. And because we're putting up treasures in heaven, we are not a failure in His eyes, but we are a success in His eyes. Maybe in people's eyes here on earth, they may think, oh, you don't have much of anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All those things will pass away anyway. They will just pass away. Won't they? I know they will. They will pass away. Again, over in Luke chapter 16, he says in verse 17, he says, And it is easy for heaven and earth to pass away than for one of these little tittles of the law to fail. Here Jesus is saying, you know, let me tell you something, he says. All this earth will pass away, but my word will not. Not even the crossing of the T, not even the dotting of the I will change. The Word of God will stand forever and it does not fail. That's why the enemy doesn't want you reading the Word of God every day. That's why he doesn't want us to get into these in discipleship empowerment tips, these little nuggles, nuggets, because if we get into them and they get into us, then we move from being a failure in this world to being successful in the eyes of God. God wants to give us success. He wants to encourage us. He wants to lift us up. Amen? And even if all that passes away, Jesus is saying, when it comes to the Word of God, to the teachings of God, it is firm and sure. Again in Luke 21, Verse 26, he says this, 21, 26. It says, Men's hearts are failing them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the power of the heavens will be shaken. Now, if you look at the context of this, the context is also talking about the last days but is also talking about the fears and the worries that are coming upon people. You know, even in Thailand here, I'm counseling people already who have got fears and worries about how they're going to be capable to do certain things, pay for certain things, and look after for certain things. But we need not to be fearful and full of anxiety. We need to be a place where we're trusting in God. Just as God says, I even will clothe the flowers. I even will feed the birds. I will look after them, and if I look after them, 
Will I also then not look after you? Will I fail you? If I have given my words to you, my words are trustworthy. I will not fail you. And so don't let fear and expectations overwhelm you. But just trust God to say, Yes, Lord, I believe you're able to do what you said you were able to do. Again, when we go over a little bit further, we see in Luke chapter 22, this conversation. Peter makes this big statement to Jesus just before Jesus goes to the cross. And he says to them, you know, Peter says, you know, I've got my sword, my side, me and everything. And I will never leave you, Lord. I will fight to the end. And Jesus warns him, be careful, Peter. Because there is going to be a time when you're going to fail me. You know, your words are pretty strong right now, but your words are not going to be strong enough for what you're going to go through. You need to going to be at not trusting yourself, but you're going to trust in me because in a few hours, you're going to look like a failure because you're going to deny me three times. But that's okay, Peter, because I've got something planned for your life. I've got something I want to mature in you. Because I'm going to use you in the, in the future. And these shortcomings that you're going to go through right now, these short failures that you're experiencing right now, it's okay. Because shortly, I am going to start giving you successes. Oh yes, there will be persecutions and trials. Yes, there will be people that are going to try to put, try to put you down and do all kinds of things against you. And yes, Peter, you will pay for it with your life. But in the end... Even if your physical body dies and decays in that, in Christ Jesus, you are successful. Why? Because we have Him in our hearts and He has given us eternal life forever and ever and ever. Isn't that beautiful? In His eyes, we're not a failure. You're not a failure as a mother. You're not a failure as a pastor. You're not a failure as a worker. You're not a failure when it comes to whether you have a house or don't have a house. You know, God is going to help you to hit that target. It's not always going to be where you're shooting all kinds of arrows and it keeps missing and missing and missing. As you continue to practice, as you continue to trust the Lord, as you continue to look to Him, you're going to be able to hit that goal and be successful in our Lord Jesus Christ and not to be a failure. Don't let the enemy, and that's what Paul or Peter needed to hear. Peter, yes, you're going to be a failure. And, and, and yes, you're going to go through problems. And Peter needed to be encouraged. Remember in the book of John, they end up on a beach, him and Jesus. And, and he's... You know, he already knows he's denied the Lord. He already knows he's wept and over the things that have come. But now Jesus restores him and tells him to go out and defeat his sheep. Go out and give testimony, Peter, of what I've done. That even though you may have dropped to the valley, I have raised you up. Just like uh, Jeremiah, just like David, just like Joshua, just like Joseph, all of those who went down through the valleys, but it was the valleys that matured them. It was the valleys that helped them to trust in the Lord. Somebody said to me one time, you know, it's always a challenge being in the valley, and, 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 I, and I agree with them. But then he said to me, what you need to know, in the valley is where the lush food is. In the valley is where the fresh water is. A lot of times we think we need to be up in the mountaintops, but how many of you have ever seen fresh food, beautiful growth of things on the mountaintops? No, it's usually barren. How many of you have seen a river flowing with living water up on top of a mountain? Oh, maybe halfway down, maybe at the bottom, but it's in the valleys where God sometimes allows us to fail so that when we do fall down, He then picks us up and gives us the ability, not in our strength, but in His strength, to go through. Even Paul deals with this. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, he talks about how love never fails. I always wonder why Paul wrote this chapter in the midst right where it is. Because I believe Paul struggled with a lot of failures. He stuttered. I know what it's like to stutter. He had troubles probably with his eyes and his physical health. 
It seemed like he made enemies everywhere he went. The Jews hated him, and a lot of times the Christians hated him. Even some of the Christians didn't want him to come back to the church because he was too outspoken. He was too pointed sometimes when it came to the Word of God. I know what that's about. I've been there. I've experienced that. But then Paul turns around and he knows that in the midst of all these failures and struggles and trials and persecutions that come upon him, he knows that there's one thing that stands stronger than anything else that never, 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 ever fails, and that is love. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's love does not fail. Amen? Keep pouring it on. You know, I've had people that have been angry at me and, oh, my nature wants to rise up and get them back. But you know, when I'm walking within the Lord and I'm walking in the power of His Holy Spirit, even though they may be angry at me, even though they may be calling me a failure or whatever it is that they may be saying, if I'm walking in the Lord, I will have the love that passes all understanding and they won't understand. They're looking for me to respond back. But the way I respond is not in anger, which would be a failure. But I can respond in love, which is a success in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Each time we fail in the short run, it seems like, wow, we've really blown it. But when we finish the race of God's will for our lives... We can then experience success. We need to hang in there in the valleys. We don't want to give up. There's people that want to give up. There's people around that are giving up all over the place. Don't give up. Turn to Jesus. And in the midst of your valley, He will strengthen you and empower you with your, His Holy Spirit. And He will take you through the valley. Yes, it may be a month. It may be a year. It may be years. Like it was for Joseph. Like it was for Joshua. Joshua went in 40 years before into the promised land, him and Caleb, and said, we can take it. And the people got overwhelmed with fear and said, no, we can't. So they had to wander for 40 years. But Joshua never lost his faith to believe that one day he will go into the promised land and conquer it for his God. And it is the same thing with us. We need to believe and know that one day, no matter how long it will be, we are more than conquerors. We shall win. We will overcome. God doesn't want us to enter into heaven as a failure. He wants us to enter into heaven as a king's kid. Successful in what we have done for his glory. Failure is not the end. We shouldn't turn failure into it. We should turn failure into a teaching and a maturing experience so that we can grow deeper in Jesus Christ. Because I believe when we call upon the name of the Lord and we confess our shortcomings, and it's good, we're not only wanting to confess our sins, but we need to confess each day our shortcomings. Amen? Because we fall short. We like to have our pity parties, we like to complain. I, you know me, some of you people know me. I also know some of you. You know, we're good complainers. We think, of, oh, how we fail. God doesn't want us to focus on our failures. That's a lie of Satan. That comes from Satan himself. What he wants us to have is victory. Amen? Victory. Trust in him. When we call upon the name of the Lord and confess our faults and our shortcomings, he puts us back on our feet and exhorts us to keep moving forward with him. I have a little paper I put up on the wall here. It says this. Be forward focused. Keep looking and walking forward with God. Keep focusing on God and his kingdom. Keep the, to the call and gifting you have been given from God. I got this on my wall here that I wrote and I got it over by my desk because I want to keep forward focus. Not looking in the past and looking at all the mistakes and saying, seeing where I fell down, but looking forward and seeing yet with anticipation what God is about to continue to do. Missing the mark 
hitting the goal or not. It comes by continuing to get up and go forward. God will always be there to help you to hit his goal. You may not be able to hit your goal, but he wants to hit his goal for your life. He has a plan and a purpose for you. And so we need to be not measuring ourselves according to the things of this world or according to how people think we should do it. But we know that in Christ we do it the way he has willed it for us to do it. And when we do it according to God's will, then we will have success and not be a failure. To me, our discipleship empowerment tip is, the key is to, that, to let failure not stop us, but keep moving forward. To keep moving forward. Look forward to what God is yet going to do. He has not finished yet. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with me yet. Even though you may be failing right now in God, you're not a failure. And in Christ Jesus, all things are possible. And God's going to use your life, whether you're in business, whether you're working in the church, whether you're staying at home with your children, whatever it is you may be doing, be patient with the Lord because in due season, you will receive a harvest. Some 20, some 50, some 100 full. That is the promise. God doesn't want us to focus on failure. He wants to focus that in the due season, the fields are coming ripe. And the harvest will be great. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to talk tonight about this word. And we thank you, Lord God, even though Joseph and Joshua and David and Jeremiah and Peter and Paul at times in their lives felt like a failure, that they had fallen down, that they didn't hit the target, make the mark. But God, you did not give up on them. You continued to walk with them. And in due season, you helped them to move from being weak and feeble to being strong and courageous in you. So Lord, I pray that you take our failures and our shortcomings and help us, O oh Lord, to use it to be strong and courageous for your glory now. For we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Make sure you remember God's not looking at you as a failure. He's looking at you as a beautiful success story. God bless you.